Let's go step by step and walk through how to make this professional looking sports poster in Photoshop. Our subject for today is AJ Merriman of the DC Breeze. Let's get into it. Let's get started on the background right off the bat. I'm gonna make this background a solid blue color. We're gonna use this DC Breeze blue and then we'll make a new layer on top of that. Now, I think I've done this in a different video, but if you take the pen tool and just start scribbling, kind of like a interesting zigzaggy pattern, can kind of go wherever you want to with this because we're gonna bring it through a wave function. I think I like it. Let's go with this as kind of our base level. I'm gonna take this into filter, convert for smart filters, and then we'll go to filter, distort, wave. We're just gonna take this wave pattern, we'll do a square wave, five generators is good. Something around here, and you can play with these amplitude and wavelength settings and you can see the preview of what it's doing. But we just kind of want to create this like chaotic, interesting wave pattern. And then after doing that, we'll go to filter, blur, radial blur. And using the zoom blur method, we're gonna crank this up to, let's go with 40. And now to complete our background or to tweak it a little bit more, let's duplicate this layer, change the color to red. So let's go to our effects, color overlay, changing this color to the DC red. Hit okay. And now I'm just gonna move this to the left, maybe down, just kind of where it makes sense. And I think we want it like feeling like a, a little bit more variety. So maybe we take the transform and just rotate it around. That way it feels a little bit more random. We can even blow it up. The idea here is just to create some kind of interesting chaotic background. So now that that background is set, I'm gonna take a few textures on top of this whole thing. I've got this abstract kind of bokeh bubble texture that I'll drop on. We'll use a uh, color dodge blend mode. And I'm also gonna take this photo of AJ Merriman, our subject, and just kind of blend it in to this background. We'll blow it up nice and big. And I'm gonna change this to black and white. So if you go up to image adjustments, black and white, We'll hit OK. And then the blend mode on this photo, we're gonna set this to overlay. And that'll just allow him to bleed through on the non-white parts, which I think is interesting. I kind of just want like a little bit of texture up here at the top where you can see his face. So I'm just trying to situate him in that space and can bring the opacity down a little bit. So it's an even more subtle effect. And again, this is just our background. So now we're gonna start building on top of this. Let's drop in our player cutout. So this is AJ Merriman shot I got at championship weekend last year, blowing it up nice and big. I'm gonna offset him to the right side here. And let's move him over a little bit more so we can see more of that background cut out. Let's go to camera raw filter. So filter, camera raw filter, and we'll start doing our basic adjustments. Let's mess with the lighting, up our exposure. Could probably brighten them a little bit more. Don't wanna go overboard. Just try to keep it balanced. Our effects, I always like to do a little bit of texture and clarity, but again, not too much. And for detail, I kind of go back and forth on noise reduction. You can see what it looks like with like the super smooth skin effect. I think in this case, I like it a little bit more textured the way it is. Can even maybe boost the sharpening, but I do like to play with this masking dial. If you hold option and click and drag this, you can see exactly what parts it's sharpening. So you're applying this sharpening effect just to the very edges. You can see when you hide that effect and show it, just a little bit more detail. So we'll hit okay. Next thing I wanna do is play with the colors of our cutout. So if you go to your adjustment layers and selective color, this is kind of my go-to color adjustment tool. And I really wanna focus on the skin tone. So they're looking pretty yellowy. I wanna shift it more towards a red hue. So oftentimes the skin tones are in the reds. So you can play with this cyan negative value will add red you can play with the magentas boosting them you can lower the yellows and i know it's affecting the jersey too we will adjust that as we need but i'm just focusing on his face right now i think that's closer to the skin tone i want for this graphic and now we don't necessarily want this selective color layer affecting his jersey so let's take our mask Let's invert it, Command I, and now with a white brush, pick the parts that we want the layer affecting. So in this case, it's just the skin tones. We can brush on his face and head here, as well as the arms and fingers. I also noticed in the initial cutout, I had a little blemish over here, so let's move him over, cover that up just a little bit. And I, honestly, I could take the back cut out and move him over so you can see a little bit more of his face. I'm also not loving this like kind of back shadow it's looking like from this back cutout. We can see 
just looks a little bit awkward, so I'm just gonna mask that out. It's not really doing anything with the background. So let's take a soft black brush and just start to take that part away. I just don't like having any kind of weird distracting elements. More color adjustments, we can go to add another selective color layer. This is affecting the whole cutout. I wanna boost the whites. If you take the whites and lower the blacks, you can see like it just kind of pops those highlights. So I really like this effect in this case because we have pure white in the background. So it just kind of blends him in a little bit more. You can see our, our cutout kind of initial masking there is pretty jagged. So let's take a black brush and tune that up. Next, we're gonna add an inner glow on our cutout just to separate him a little bit more from the background. So if you go to your effects, inner glow, we'll use this white inner glow with the blend mode overlay. And you can adjust the size as needed. You can see the desired effect. I think around there feels about right to me. And now let's go through and emphasize some shadows and highlights. We can do this by adding a curves adjustment layer. Go to your adjustment layers, curves, and I'm just gonna bring this midpoint down and then invert this mask, Command I. So we're starting with the shadows. I wanna start with a lower flow on the brush and just start painting the darker parts of his jersey and face. So this is just gonna add contrast in like very specific areas of the cutout and just helps the whole thing pop a little bit more. Okay, now for the highlights, we will duplicate this curves layer, Command J. Let's delete this mask and make a new one. And then with this curves layer, we're gonna boost this middle point. So we're focusing on the highlights now. And again, you can invert this mask. So it's a black mask we're painting on with white and with a white brush, I'm just going to go through the more bright highlighted portions of the jersey and the player cutout in general. Nice contrast, and I'll show you a before and after. So you can see a before and after. And if you wanna enhance this effect further, you can always go back into these curves layers and play with these settings some more. So if we wanted it even more contrasted, you can do something like this. I think we can adjust the colors a little bit on the jersey and background just to match them a little bit better. I'm kind of liking this jersey red better than the background red. The background one looks just a little bit muted. So let's go to our background. And yeah, this is our red shape layer. I'm just gonna eyedropper point on the jersey instead and get a little bit more brightness. And honestly, you can see the blue on the jersey down here in the right corner, slightly different than the background blue. So again, let's adjust that. Let's take the background blue and just eyedropper one of these darker blue points and just with our fill layer, see how that looks. Next, we're gonna create this glass effect on the left side, and this is gonna house our main text. So from here, the key step is making a new layer and then Command Option Shift E is a shortcut to apply the image as you're looking at it to its own layer. Let's make this layer a smart object, going up to filter, convert for smart filters. And then we're gonna make this glass effect using a few different filters. Let's start with a blur, Gaussian blur, and we can really crank this up, yeah, somewhere around here. Now go up to filter, filter gallery, and there's a, a cool glass filter in here. If you go to distort, click on glass, you can see right off the bat this frosted texture and you can play with this and kind of get a variety of glass effects. They've got blocks, canvas, tiny lens. I like frosted for this graphic, but you can also play with these settings and just how intense you want this effect to be. Find something you're happy with, and then I would add another effect on top of this, a little bit of grain, not that kind. We will go with regular grain, somewhat low intensity, and we don't need a ton of contrast, or I guess we want like a middle level of contrast. Yeah, something around there. And there's a wide variety of ways to add grain in Photoshop, so don't feel like this is the only way. We'll hit OK, and now we've covered our canvas in a glass version of itself. You can just see removing this layer, turning it back on. We can now take a mask, click our mask icon. Let's go to our gradient tool. G is a shortcut. And I'm just gonna click and drag using a black to transparent gradient, which it is on right now by default. Click and drag from a point towards this left side and drag it a little bit further. So now we're just getting this like frosted glass texture on the left side of the image. And if you pull up your grids, command apostrophe is a shortcut there. 
You can be a little bit more precise and try to line this up with one of your grid lines. I'm using this gradient just to get like a super subtle, soft fade. You could use a rectangular marquee tool and make it kind of a hard cutoff, but I kind of like the softer look for the, the gradual fade to glass. So now we've got our glass set. The next thing we're gonna do is make this kind of like makeshift AJ Merriman logo. Let's make a new layer, hit T for type tool and click once. Let's use the font Lust. Lust regular, I believe is what I initially used. And I'm gonna blow this up a good bit just so we can see it. Type out an A. We're gonna do this AJ5 logo. That is not his real logo, but just for the sake of this design, kind of a fun thing you can do with any player name, really. Just take their initials, take their number, and make some sort of arrangement. So just typing out each of the elements here. I'm just gonna kind of cluster them together in like a tight way. And maybe we want a little bit of space between these elements. This is obviously totally up to you. Maybe there is like a specific logo or even a team logo that you want to use for this part. Obviously let your creativity shine through the way it wants to. Just gonna group this in a folder, call it AJ5. And now I'm gonna cut these letters out of this glass. So I'm just gonna position them towards the top and maybe blow them up a little bit more. And then selecting each of these characters, holding command and shift, you can click on each of these layer thumbnails. And now we have like that text selected. You can turn these off and then our glass layer that we have here, because there's a mask already on it, let's put this in a folder by itself. And then I'm gonna drop on an inverted mask. So if you hold option and click the mask icon, instead of masking whatever's selected to that layer, it's gonna mask everything that's not selected. So we'll click that. And you can see the AJ5 has been cut out of our glass. You can't see it so well right now. So what we're gonna do is come down to our background layer or like the group of our background. Let's make a new layer. And I'm just gonna take a white to transparent gradient and brighten up this side so we get a little bit more of that AJ5. And I'm just adjusting these sliders so we can see it a good amount. And honestly, if we wanna adjust the background after this, we have that option just because we initially made these shapes like individual ones. And so if anything's better when you move these around, obviously feel free. So next we're gonna start building out the rest of the text on this left side. So let's go back to the top of everything. Let's make a new layer and T for your type tool. Let's start by just typing out his name, AJ Merriman. And for this font, we're gonna use like a script font. Let's use Austin. Austin Pen, Austin Pen regular, and can shrink this down. I'm gonna pull up my grids again, command apostrophe, and just make sure we're keeping like a solid margin from the left side. So maybe we use like a, a one and a half box margin. Let's do this, let's go up to view, guides, new guide layout, and 0.75 inches for the margin. So we can use that as our main guide and just adjust this accordingly. Trying to have this centered on this glass panel. Let's make a new layer underneath that. And I'm just gonna make like a, a little underline for this name. Trying to use a, a similar size brush as the font. Let's bring our flow back up to 100 and click once over here. Hold shift and click once over here. That's a little too thick. Try that again. Yeah, that feels better. Let's make another new layer and we're gonna drag out a text box over here. And for this, we're gonna use Montserrat as the font. Montserrat, probably semi-bold, will look good. We can take our paragraph text from text edit, got our AJ Merriman facts over here, and can adjust this as we need. I think we need a little bit of line spacing just so we don't have that awkward appearance at the very end. By the way, this paragraph spacing or the alignment is set to justify all. I think I wanna increase the line spacing a little bit. Now for this bottom left corner, I've also got some text I wanna include down here. So let's make a new layer, T for your type tool, click once. And here's what I have for this like non-paragraph player description. And for this one, I'm gonna space out the font a bunch. At least this is what I did in the initial poster. Kind of like it and just drag that down. I'm gonna add uh, three stars at the top too. So first of all, I'm going all the way down to this margin. Again, let's spread this out a little bit more. And then the three stars, let's make a new layer. I think I've got a font zap dingbats and a capital H 
is the star symbol. So kind of a, a shorter, quicker way rather than drawing out specific shapes. But something like this, we can space these out even more. Everything's feeling a little low on this side. Like I think this text would be better off if it's totally centered. So let's see how that looks. I'm just gonna highlight those layers, group them together. We'll call this middle paragraph. And we'll hit Command A to select the whole thing and center justify. Now this is overlapping this AJ5, which I don't mind, but I probably don't love it. So let's actually kind of reset our alignment there. I'm gonna delete this layer mask where we cut out those letters and turn this back on. I think let's move them up maybe to like here. We can honestly shrink them down a little bit. I wanna make sure like all the letters are legible. So yeah, something like that and just give a little bit more space into the whole thing. So again, command shift, clicking all these text layers, turning it off and then dropping an inverted mask onto our glass allows those shapes to be cut out. And we can also take that same AJ5 logo that we made and I'm gonna duplicate it, let's turn it back on. Let's shrink it down and just put it in the top right corner just as, as a nod to like a consistent theme for this graphic. So this is our main design. I'm now going to stamp this whole thing onto its own layer by again, command option shift E and let's convert this for smart filters. Let's run this whole thing through camera raw filter and we can really just start playing with the colors a little bit more, see where we want to land, but can start with the lighting, can brighten this whole thing up, honestly. Kind of has a nice like shiny look to it and I want to keep that. And whenever I do this, I kind of like take the sliders back and forth and just see what I like. I do remember like slightly blue adjusting this towards the blue in the temperature dial. And I kind of like that cooler feel. I can also play with the vibrance and saturation, but I think I like the colors as they are right now. So a few other adjustments, maybe a little bit of vignetting and some texture and clarity. It's always good. Now for some fun finishing touches you can play with, we can duplicate this image layer. So command J and then play around with like, uh, you know, this like duplicated version serving as some additional texture. And then we can make another one command J and show this kind of in the bottom right corner. Kind of goes with like the chaotic background feel that we have or that we had to start off the graphic. Just gives it a little bit more intrigue and some like more subtle elements to keep the whole thing interesting. A few other finishing touches you can play with. Make a new layer, Command A to select the whole screen. If you go to your quick selection tool, W is a shortcut. Right click, fill, 50% gray, hit OK. And then convert for smart filters and then go up to filter, noise, add noise. This is a easy way you can add some grain to any image just sitting on top of everything. I think something like 7%, it's like a solid conservative value. And I always set the blend mode to hard light with like a 50% opacity. Shouldn't say always, but a lot of the time. And that kind of allows it to bleed through onto the white. So we don't have like a perfect white. We have like this grainy white. Now we can also play with some color lookups. If you want to further adjust the color, I, I think I like this Fuji Kodak 2395. It's just like a subtle way of washing things out. I also think curves adjustments are always worth playing with. So going to your adjustment layers, curves, and just see what happens when you adjust the contrast. You might find something you like a bit better. I think lifting the blacks is always kind of an interesting matte feel at the end of a design. So that is gonna do it for our finished AJ Merriman poster design. Really happy with how this came out. I was hoping to get out this tutorial soon because I know a lot of people requested this one. If you haven't already, my 30 day poster design challenge takeaways video is up on YouTube. So be sure to check that out. I have some kind of miscellaneous poster design tips that I found from designing 30 posters in 30 days. As always, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.